Hello, this is the second part in this series of extraction of a maxillary right cuspid tooth and immediate placement of an implant followed by a screw retained implant abutment and crown. So this is after, this is the before and after the implant and crown. Again, before and after. And this is uncovering and impressing the implant. So the implant has osseointegrated for three months. This is after three months of healing, giving an injection and uncovering the implant with a punch drill. These are just small rongiers, removing that core of tissue. This is a large spoon. You can see the healing abutment coming into view and I'm unscrewing, unscrewing the flat healing cap. Again, this has been in place for three months. There's the implant and we're gonna do, we're gonna do an open tray polyether with custom tray impression. And I'm hand tightening uh, the impression coping. Take a radiograph to confirm that the impression coping is completely seated. Then we have a hole in our custom polyether tray. You can do a closed tray impression. I'll show quite a few dental minute videos on that in forthcoming episodes, but this is an open tray. You can see the impression coping sticking through the hole. This is Luxabite blockout material. This polyether is so rigid, if you don't block out the interproximal holes between the teeth, it can lock in. So you want to be sure to place this material before you take your polyether impression. Now I'm squirting the polyether into the custom tray and you can refer to the dental minute videos on how to make a polyether, how to take a polyether with custom tray impression. I'm squirting the wash material around the impression coping and onto the, into the custom tray also. Now you'll notice I'm going to place my finger, I'm going to wipe this material away from the impression coping and I'm going to put my finger on top of the, the coronal part of the impression coping. Now if you just wipe it away and don't put your finger back on top of it, that material will ooze over the top of that impression coping and you'll have to tear away the, the impression material to get to the impression coping to unscrew it. So leave your finger on there while the impression is setting up. So here's the impression coping in the hole. I'm going to remove that little bit and then unscrew the impression coping, loosen it. And here's our, now I'm going to place this healing cap. Now you want to be sure that the healing cap is, places pressure on the soft tissue, that it's a little bit wider than the orifice between the alveolar, the uh, gingival crest and the implant. One of the things that can happen is if the emergence profile from the implant is not at least as wide as the crown and abutment when you screw those to place, it can interfere with the seating, the complete seating of the crown and abutment. And that can potentially lead to the screw loosening. So be sure that there's not a lot of pressure on the implant crown and abutment when they're seated. So you want this healing abutment to be wide enough that the emergence profile in the orifice, the hole, is a little bit wider than the final implant abutment and crown. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand tighten this. I'm not gonna screw it down to 35 Newton centimeters. You see the blanching, so this is good. And now we're gonna place a removable flipper as a provisional. You want to be sure that the artificial tooth doesn't contact the healing abutment. So I'm putting a little rope wax in the hole of the healing abutment and I'm squirting Luxatemp around the healing abutment to basically take an impression of that healing abutment. I'm looting that part to the flipper. This is flowable composite. I'm 
I'm just sculpting that to make it look like a tooth. And this can be done rather quickly. It probably takes 15 minutes to seat this flipper. But it's very important that this under part doesn't contact the healing abutment. Taking a shade for the laboratory. Here's the healing abutment in place. See the implant is ideal just barely into the floor of the sinus. That's perfect because you're using the cortical bone in the floor of the sinus to stabilize the implant. There's a provisional restoration with the ball class flipper. Okay, so that's the second part of this sequence on immediate extraction of a maxillary right cuspid tooth with the easy extract system, immediate implant placement, and then fabrication of a screw retained implant abutment and crown. And that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.